Welcome to the tropical Turks and Caicos Islands, an archipelago located in the Atlantic Ocean and the Northern West Indies. This chain of islands, known for high-end holidays, made international headlines in 2017 when it was hit hard by the one-two punch of Hurricanes Irma and Maria. The deadly storms came at a time when the country was still reeling from the aftermath of both economic and political crises. But Turks and Caicos is back on its feet again. Reconstruction efforts are underway, tourists are returning, and the country is for the most part back in business. Now storms can't be stopped, but to help ensure a less volatile economic climate going forward, the government has set out a five-year, five-point plan. It aims to first diversify the tourism sector and second strengthen its linkages with other segments of the economy. It also intends to rejuvenate the financial services industry, build upon the nascent knowledge-based economy, and finally revitalize the manufacturing, fishing, and agriculture sectors. We're here to find out how these plans are coming along and what they mean for foreign investors who might want to tap into these priority sectors, all while enjoying a pretty spectacular setting. Join me as we go on location. The Turks and Caicos Islands, or TCI, is a British overseas territory. Consisting of the larger Caicos Islands and smaller Turks Islands, the country has a tiny population of just under 35,000 people. The islands were struck by back-to-back -back Category 5 hurricanes in September 2017 and suffered severe damage. But essential services such as electricity were restored quickly, especially compared with some neighboring countries, and most resorts were ready to open their doors by the start of the peak tourism season a few months later. So our main challenge right now is rebuilding. Um, rebuilding and rebuilding not just quickly, but stronger. But when we look in terms of investment, is to make sure that the investor knows that we're here. The entire Caribbean has not been flattened. Um, we still do have exciting um, areas for investment. Clearly, a Category 5 hurricane is very devastating, but I'm very pleased that the government and the private sector came together very quickly, came up with a strategy that has gotten our islands recovered. With the acute phase of physical recovery already passed, thoughts can turn to rebuilding an economy that was dented heavily by the ill winds of the global financial crisis and compounded by a period of political turmoil. The dust has settled on both situations, and the current premier, the country's first female leader, was elected in 2016. She says foreign investors are essential to her government's economic recovery and diversification plans. We have a very small population. There is only so much we can do in terms of taxing the population that is here. And of course, the, the challenge of capital um, amongst a small population is also an issue. So we do spend quite a bit in trying to attract um, foreign investors into the Turks and Caicos um, for those two express purposes. So it's really critical to our economic growth and development. And any time we speak about expanding our economy, we speak more of how we can diversify um, our product to bring in more investors. Diversifying the all-important tourism sector is job one. The reputation for elite tourism has been underpinned by the accolades showered on Providenciales' vast Grace Bay Beach, named the world's best beach by travel site TripAdvisor. Considering the Turks and Caicos Islands' popularity among discerning travelers, its vast stretches of white sand beaches and sparkling turquoise waters, it's somewhat surprising that there have been so few new hotels and resorts built here in recent years. But although the country doesn't want to become a mass market tourism destination, there is still room in the market and on the beach for new entrants. Among those trying to rectify that is Freedom Group Management, which acquired and now manages two condo resorts on Grace Bay, the four-star Royal West Indies and five-star Regent Grand. The company is also now getting into the luxury villa business, an area many on the island feel has growth potential given its premium visitor profile. Things look pretty good on the island and it manages to pick up a lot of high worth individuals to come on holiday here. It's a very 
fast upcoming island is developing very quickly. There's still a lot of property to be developed on the island. The main magnet for tourism in the TCI has been the island of Providenciales, known locally as Provo. But the serene beauty and wild windswept beaches of some of the other islands has caught the eye of resort developers. This site here on the small sleepy island of South Caicos has a newly opened US owned luxury resort called Sail Rock with big plans to expand to add more accommodation and amenities. The government hopes others will follow. Well, there are many possibilities here. We have 40 islands and keys. So while the world would generally know about Providenciales, the opportunities in Grand Turk, South Caicos, Sol Key, Middle and North Caicos are certainly on par with, with uh, Providenciales. So we want to say to the investment community to come and explore possibilities in Turks and Caicos. In our family islands, you can still get you know, on some good ground floor opportunities. We're seeing um, a lot of interest in uh, developments in the outer islands. The other islands like Grand Turk, South Caicos, North and Middle Caicos. And um, so those sort of interests um, al allows us to lobby with the government on behalf of the investors, the necessary um, infrastructures that needs to be in place to facilitate these investments. There is room to grow not just in tourism and its immediate spin-off industries, but in others as well. Invest TCI is the agency facilitating investments and handling inbound inquiries. Because we have a, such a huge market in the tourism industry, um, it gives us a lot of opportunity for spin-offs and um, support industries to be developed. One of the, one of the biggest sales for Turks and Caicos is that we have a lot of untapped potential. We have a lot of under, underdeveloped sectors and sectors such as manufacturing, light manufacturing and um, agro industries and agriculture. Those are things that are untapped. Um, so, you know, we encourage, we encourage investors to look at the potential in those areas. And we, we look, we look to, to open dialogue on what can be, what can be proposed. And right now, um, the investment policy that has been revived um, speaks to those underdeveloped sectors and um, we will be working on a strategy in the coming months um, to begin to, to, to promote those sectors as development interest for, for foreign investors. The small local population means a small pool of workers for those incoming companies to draw on. The tourism industry relies heavily on an immigrant workforce. Invest TCI promotes the quality, not quantity, of the local workforce instead. We do have a very small pool of local labor, yes, but that pool of local labor is, is very, a, a very educated pool and um, also very exposed um, because we have, um, we have a very good tertiary education, secondary education system here, um, one community college that services the islands, but quite a number of our, our students venture abroad once they would have finished secondary school. So because of that, we, we find that our labor pool of local talent is one that is very exposed and also very educated. So we, we are proud of that fact. I'm the eternal optimist, and I think the Turks and Caicos is going to do well. Um, you know, of course, we've had our issues uh, politically, um, but I think the younger generation, uh, those who are coming up, I like to think my generation, if I'm certain I could speak for, for my peers, we're keen to show that we're global, that we could compete globally. E.J. Saunders is among the fledgling entrepreneurial class on the islands. He's created a mobile payment solution and believes there's untapped potential in fintech, telecoms, and IT services off the back of planned growth in financial services. As with tourism, the Turks and Caicos Islands came later to the game than many other countries in the region in establishing an international financial services offering. But this is an industry earmarked for more promotion and development. As a financial services jurisdiction, it is very small. I think we have something like 0.01% of the total world market in international financial services. Um, and one of my focuses is to try and improve that market share and to increase the number of uh, 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 new entrants into uh, the territory to try and grow um, uh, the profile of the Turks and Caicos internationally 
um, and to grow thereby the financial services sector. Um, and we've made a significant progress in that regard in the last couple of years. And we have a very clear commitment to do more. The TCI international financial services industry is primarily known for its reinsurance captive product that's been sold quite successfully to the U.S. market since the late 1980s. Growing this base and expanding into other products is a clear possibility given some of the country's inherent advantages from an investor perspective. From the opportunity perspective, it's a U.S. dollar economy. It has a strong rule of law. Constitutionally, it is a, a, a British territory. Uh, we have uh, the ultimate court of appeal here is the Privy Council in London. So you have a guarantee of a, of a strong rule of law, which is something that investors are very attracted to and regard as very important. Because the jurisdiction developed a little bit later than many of our neighbors, we have a very clean banking system, Patriot Act, fact compliant. So when you look at the jurisdiction from a business environment as a whole, it has all the necessary components, a good legal structure, um, North American functional currency, which is our predominant market, um, and ultimately a very stable banking system, all which, from our point of view, really provides a strong underpinning. With our close proximity to the United States, I can be in New York within three hours if I need to have a meeting. So we're close enough, but I don't have to suffer from the, the laws, the regulations that the United States have, particularly around how you tax uh, technology companies. While the TCI can certainly see a future in services, there are still other ground-level opportunities, literally as well as figuratively. There is a large market and there's a large potential for um, stuff that is grown here. Hotels and the resorts require a lot of food, and so there's this market um, right here in TCI. But there's also the potential to export unique um, goods out of TCI. It's a, a very young industry in Turks and Caicos and with that there's a lot of advantage. Um, unlike other parts of the world where you've had farming so long that they've used a number of pesticides and basically um, things that are banned now, you here have an open slate. All of the produce that I've grown here for years and I've been in it here now for eight years, I use no fertilizer. There's an abundance of fresh water in the ground here. I dug wells both on this property and other properties down at, uh, on the farm. And the water is good for growing and all I use is just the soil and the water from the ground. But what is really needed for farming to be successful in these islands is equipment. There's a, a big role for foreign companies and foreign investments. Recently, we had the um, cabinet approve the agriculture policy. And one of the things about the agriculture policy is that we're trying to create this investing environment for persons who want to get into agriculture. So it speaks to, for example, zero tariffs on customs import for inputs that are used in agriculture. And there are a number of other areas in the policy that is addressed to try to create that investing environment. The food sector is not only about agriculture. An important aspect for an island nation like this one is aquaculture, or the harvesting of sea life. The conch and lobster have pride of place on the Turks and Caicos flag, illustrating the importance of and pride in these local shellfish. Caicos Pride Products is a locally owned seafood processing plant located on South Caicos. It processes lobster, conch, and scale fish and exports to the U.S. for onward shipping to some global markets, but could do much more if given the resources. The volume of fish that we have here uh, in the Turks and Caicos Islands and the demand for it, it is a, um, it's a good match. We import more fish than we produce here in the Turks and Caicos, which is an island nation and there's something wrong with that picture. If we can develop a fishery, we really believe that it could increase the GDP for the Turks and Caicos Islands as well as do good and do well for the Turks and Caicos on a whole. What makes the most sense to me right now is someone with a similar vision for what we have. And of course, we always need capital. Um, this is basically virgin territory. The deep water fishery has basically been untouched. And um, this is what people want more than even the conch and the lobster. They won't fish, and we have it. Having assessed its capabilities and potential strengths in its self-identified key sectors, now is the time for the government to put its growth plans into action. It is ready most of all to turn the page on the political and other dramas of the recent past. Our recent challenges, I, I would say to persons, 
it should be reassuring to know that persons have been brought before the court and that no one is above the rule of law and that we are strong in the application of law and the rule of law in this country. We are settling in on that issue. Persons would be aware that the trials are still ongoing for former um, members of government. Um, it is not disruptive at all to what is happening in Turks and Caicos. We are rebuilding our reputation stronger. Having weathered storms of the atmospheric, economic, and political variety, all of which did their damage, the Turks and Caicos Islands are hoping for calmer waters ahead. Keeping the economy afloat requires diversification, and that requires foreign investment. As we've seen, even in the dominant sector of tourism, there are still plenty of areas left to explore, not to mention in the other sectors which are still in their infancy. Now we've tried to shed a bit of light on the gaps in the market that foreign investors could fill, and we hope you've enjoyed the tour of these beautiful blue-hued islands as much as we have. Join me next time to see where we go on location.